Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to Hop and Lou Fishing Flies. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to tie the silver stoat. This is another salmon fly um, and I was thinking maybe we'll have a change um, soon so I might upload a trout fly video as we have done quite a few salmon flies but for today we're going to be focusing on the silver stoat. So um, I'm going to list the materials as I go along as usual. Um, to begin with, we're going to start with a size 12 up eye salmon double. And this is silver. Silver is the ideal colour of hook which you're going to want to be using for this um, fly. It's in the original pattern and I definitely recommend it. And the silk I'm using is black uni thread 80. And so to begin with, I'm just going to tie in my uni thread like so. Nice tight touching turns. We're not going to want any of the silver hook on the body part of the fly to show. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to take the uni thread to about halfway, where we will then grab ourselves some silver oval tinsel, and this is small. Um, medium would also work as well, definitely not large though, um, especially for the type of hook which I'm using, large would be too overwhelming. The length we're going to cut is about 4 to 5 inches, actually let's say 4 inches because it's quite a small hook I'm tying on. Obviously you guys can tie on a slightly larger hook if you want to. <clears throat> yeah, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uni thread to the point where if you just let the uni thread drop, it should be in line with um, the, end, the end of the hook. I can't really show you now because the angle, but that's what it is roughly. And we're going to grab the oval tinsel and we're going to turn it forwards once, twice, thrice, and then on the fourth time, uh, no, we'll actually go for four. Then on the fifth time, we'll take it underneath one of the hooks, like so. And then we'll just give it a slight tug. And the oval tinsel will come back a bit, but that's fine. Um, and then we're just going to catch it in using a turn of the uni thread. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to, we are going to use this later on. So we're just going to put it in the spring of our vise. If you don't have that, you can always have it dangling like that. Um, although I do recommend a spring for your vice, just like that. Now what we're going to be using is we're going to be using some golden pheasant tippets. Um, so this stuff here, not this stuff. Um, and we're going to take a good feather because we're wanting it to be not too chunky, but we're wanting it to look good. So I'm going to take some, uh, some of the feathers near the top of this golden pheasant. So, um, yeah, so you're wanting the feathers to kind of push upwards, so it's like it's like a curve upwards, almost, if you get me. Um, and the length is about that much, I'd say, a bit less. That's going to do it for me. Uh, pinch and loop technique, uh, as always, guys. So that's looking quite nice. That's what you're trying to get the look of so it kind of brushes up a bit um, and you're just gonna make sure no golden pheasant is showing uh, this part of the fly and we're now just gonna cut off any of the excess golden pheasant guys you may notice that I'm going slightly faster than usual it's just I don't really want to do this video in two parts uh, as the alley shrimp uh, check out that video if you haven't guys um, but yeah so now what we're going to do is you can optionally use floss. Um, I'm just going to use my uni thread just to cover up the body of the fly um, like so. And to rib it, we're going to use the oval tinsel. Um, yeah, you can use the floss. Uh, I'm just not going to, but, you know, your choice, your call. So I'm just going to wind it up roughly. I reckon three or four turns should be enough. Yeah, that's going to do it for me. 
I'm just going to do three turns just for simplicity's sake. Um, yeah. There we go. And I'm just going to catch it in using the oval tinsel. Like so. And with any of the excess, you can just cut that off. I'm just going to cut it away, bearing in mind that you don't cut your uh, oval, t uh, not oval tinsel, sorry, bearing in mind that you don't cut your uh, uni thread, obviously, as that would be a shame. Um, but if that does happen, me and my co worker Shin have uploaded, uh, well, he, Shin has uploaded a video on how to uh, fix that if there is a problem like that. Um, which is quite common if you're tugging on the thread or it gets snagged between the point of the hook or the barb. Um, so yeah, that's nice. That's coming together now. Um, now what we're going to use is we're going to use um, some hackles. These are cock hackles, uh, black cock hackles. Um, and you're going to grab one about this size, roughly. Um, and yeah, cut it near the base and peel back any fibres so you're left with something like that. There we go. And you're just going to tie this in as normal, as always. Um, when I caught in my oval silver tinsel, I accidentally started turning backwards, um, which is slightly irritating. Rookie mistake right there. Um, but it's fine. Um, yeah, so we're just going to get the hackle going. Um, it's going to look pretty awful, the hackle, at the beginning, but that's because we're not 100% done with the hackle. Oh, there it goes. I should probably be using hackle pliers um, when I'm doing this, but I'm just not. Because, um, as I said, they're a bit time-consuming. And I'm wanting this video to be reasonably quick so I don't have to do it in two parts. Um, like last video. That's good. You're going to push all of the fibres forwards when doing this. Um, yeah, there we go. I've just caught in the... Oh, no, I haven't. Beg the pardon. I'm just about to catch in the hackle. The end of the hackle there. That's it caught in like so. And we can push all of the fibres forward. And actually, with doing so, we can just go like this there. That's nice. And we're going to cut off any excess of the feather. There it goes. Being careful not to snip away at our uni thread. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to have an issue. Just pushing the um, hackle forward. Is what we're trying to do right now um yeah so that it's all pushed forward and there's a tiny bit of space left over for um the wing which we're going to be using stoat's tail obviously as the name of the fly suggests um so you're going to grab a fair amount for the wing um I'm looking for about, I'll show you once I've cut it off. You can always, uh, you know, take away parts when you cut it off. So always cut off a bit more than you want. You can take away parts of this. And I'll lick your fingers and just bring all the fibres together. So this is a really simple sanding fly. You know, it's very, very effective. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it is simple and easy to tie. Good last minute. Salmon fly, um, yeah. So I'm just catching in the, um, the stoat's tail. Oh, actually, I'll show you how much I'm using. So I'm using about that much. It's about the length to the end of the golden pheasant that you're going to want to do this. Um, oh gosh, that was a big, big error. Um, tying. <laughs> the uni thread backwards um but that's okay honestly i don't really mind 
I'm just going to push the hackle forward because I'm kind of wanting the hackle to stay forward. And I'm just going to wet the fibres of this squirrel tail. You have to get this quite precise. There we go, and um, that is the squirrel tail, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, squirrel tail, um, I mean, stoat's tail caught in nicely, yeah, so that's, that's nice, um, that's basically the end of the fly, obviously don't forget to varnish your fly and, uh, do the half hitch at the end, um, I'm just gonna cut off some of the excess, uh, parts of the stoat's tail that I don't want but overall that is the stoat's tail salmon fly very effective salmon fly um I recommend it uh but yeah if you did enjoy today's video then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new um share this with some fly tying friends of yours and I'll see you in another video hopefully we can try and get a trout fly I'm um, in on the channel. Um, yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>